I recall fast bowling great Wasim Akram saying when they had to play against Australia, they would lose the game in the bus itself. Simply decoded, it meant Australia was then a great team with a lineup including Hayden, Langer, Ponting, Clark, and Gilchrist. The joke then was, what was the point in celebrating a wicket as another great would be walking in? And yes, you lost the match in your mind even before it started. This was something like the West Indies team, which had Greenwich and Haynes opening then, followed by Viv Richards and Clive Lloyd. The Aussies were the first to perfect the art of sledging. It was basically a verbal attack on a batsman calling him names, some abuse and constant harangue from the close and fielders to demoralise, dishearten and destroy batsmen in their minds. Steve Waugh, who was called Motormouth in his early days under Alan Border, describes sledging as mental disintegration. I have huge personal regard for Steve Waugh as I have rarely seen a captain who could do trench warfare as good as him. He fought till the last and led his troops into battle. The Indian team in the 70s and 80s was seen as polite, quiet, self-effacing and gentlemanly. Exceptions like Ravi Shastri gave it as good as they got. In my mind's eye, no other skipper has changed the mental attitude of the Indian cricket team more than Virat Kohli. He is pugnacious, aggressive and talkative when required under the mentorship of Dhoni. He cut his chops but later flowered into an effective leader who had his own distinct style. What I like most about Virat is he has taught the Indian team to give it back and never take it with head bowed down. This was seen even in an IPL match when he took on rival captain Gautam Gambhir. On the field, Virat is like a raptor. Rivals fear him. Once he took a catch in the deep of a rampaging batsman and gave him a verbal send-off, much to the discomfiture of commentator Harsha Bhogle, who said, Oh, there he goes again, setting a very poor example for the kids. Harsha wrote a piece later reprimanding Virat. It is another matter that Harsha was sacked from the com box for being too critical of Dhoni and his men. I am an unabashed supporter of Virat as I believe his attitude is excellent for our team winning. He sends a signal to the boys, don't take it quietly. Let the rival know we are up among the best and we will wallop you. There is nothing apologetic here. This is a tough game fought by hardened men and it has evolved considerably from what it used to be. Virat symbolizes that change. When he took on Ben Stokes after they got engaged in a verbal, Sunil Gavaskar said, what is the need to give a batsman a send-off? The batsman is already upset, so let him go as you've got his wicket already. Next time Stokes fell, Virat looked up at the com box and put a finger on his lips. I loved it. No disrespect to the great Sunny Gavaskar, but even he flipped his lid against the abuse of Dennis Lilly when he walked off with Chetan Chauhan till the ropes. In those days, I used to wonder when would we learn to dish it out. Seeing Virat in action, I feel very proud of this team and the way the skipper speaks his mind. Like Virat said, after winning the Mohali test, after England won the toss, they clapped as if they had won the test. We showed them how to win it. No other skipper would have put it so bluntly. In Virat, we have a player who has mastered the art of mental disintegration like Steve Waugh and Shane Wan once did and Saurav Ganguly to some extent. India has finally found its man who first wins where it matters the most, in the mind.